Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. Well, for those of you who watch this program on a regular basis, you know that Almighty God often gives us warnings about these end times through sporting events. And we've looked at incidents in baseball, football, even soccer and horse racing. And there is a drama being played out today in the National Football League about quarterback Tim Tebow. The NFL is blackballing Tim Tebow. They are preventing him from playing because he is an outspoken Christian. This despite the fact that he is a very successful quarterback. And despite the fact that many teams in the NFL are in dire need of a good quarterback. Many teams already have played two or three different quarterbacks. And in fact, the St. Louis Rams, you won't believe this, have made an overture to Brett Favre, who retired three years ago and is 44 years old. But they never contacted Tim Tebow. And on this program, I want to discuss why an outspoken Christian is not desirable in the National Football League. And I want to read from an article by Michael Silver, which he published back in May on Yahoo Sports. And here's what he said. As a journalist who has consistently experienced the wrath of Tebow Nation, the Tebow Nation, by the way, are those of us who follow him avidly, mostly for passing along the slings and arrows voiced by various NFL players, coaches, and talent evaluators. I'm well aware that many devotees of the world's most celebrated unemployed quarterback carry a heavy persecution complex. Well, yes, I do feel persecuted, and I'll tell you why. Tim Tebow is a success, successful, talented quarterback, and yet he is blackballed by the NFL, as you yourself admit. Here's the headline from this article. Let's take a look at it, and you'll see. And Michael Silver continues. He seems like a great guy to have on a team, and I'd be tempted to bring him in as our backup, one NFL head coach told me Wednesday, but it's just not worth dealing with all the stuff that comes with it. He's talking about you and me, people. We're the stuff that supports Tim Tebow because he is a Christian. Or in the words of one AFC head coach to whom I spoke recently, you don't want to put up with the circus. Oh, come on, guys. NFL is a sporting event, and you mean there's no circus -y activities at NFL games? You and I know better. This is all doublespeak for the fact that they are blackballing him because he is a devout Christian. And he continues, Since playing in a pair of playoff games 16 months ago, now this was in the fall of 2010, or must have been probably the spring of 2011, Tebow, whose only off-the-field baggage comes in the form of his cult-like following, did you get that? That's the only problem with Tim Tebow. And the media frenzy it provokes, come on, sporting teams don't like media frenzy? It hasn't been affected, afforded the opportunity to show that he sucks. Well, that's Michael Silver's opinion. Tim Tebow has never indicated that he sucks at playing football. It is, it's certainly possible that he's simply not up to NFL standards. Well... NFL standards may be that they like losing quarterbacks and never will be, but wouldn't it be nice to get some conclusive proof? Yes, it would. Before this story comes to a meek and unfulfilling close. So even the sports writers in the media admit Tim Tebow is being blackballed. Now here's an article by Alberto Vargas, and he's commenting on Michael Silver's article, and these articles appeared back in May. 
The incomprehensible absurdity continues in the NFL. It has now been 10 days since Tim Tebow was released by the much maligned New York Jets, and as Michael Silver of Yahoo Sports mentioned on Thursday, it has become increasingly clear that the ultra-popular quarterback who has hijacked many a news cycle has no viable landing spot. I wonder why. Veteran sports writer for Yahoo Sports, Michael Silver, wrote an excellent piece on Thursday exploring the likelihood of Tim Tebow finding his way out of the NFL for good despite his tremendous contributions on and off the field, despite his cult-like following, despite the incomparable excitement that he brings to the game, despite his success as a starter, 7-4 and four record, and an amazing win in the playoffs. And I want to talk about that in a minute and despite his natural leadership and tremendous work ethic. These sports writers are admitting Tim Tebow's talent, and they are admitting that he is being blackballed for one reason, because he is an outspoken Christian. Of course, they use the code words of cult-like following, etc. And Alberto Vargas concludes his article, as Michael Silver pointed out in his piece, no player is ever entitled to play in the NFL. Many great players before Tebow, perhaps even more talented than Tebow, have come in and out of the league, but this situation is different. This time, however, there is a glaring difference. In virtually every other case, the once prominent player who washes out does so after failing on the field and or getting into trouble off the field. Neither is the case with Tebow. Since his success at the helm with the Broncos, Tebow has not been given another opportunity. Why? So I agree with Silver and Vargas in these two articles. Tim Tebow is being discriminated against on the basis of his religion. Now, the columnists don't want to come out and say that, but if you read between the lines, that is the facts of this matter. And now I want to explain why this is occurring. Almighty God is using this Tim Tebow drama as a warning to end times Christians. This will be our future. Even though we have many talents, we will be denied a living we will not be able to buy or sell. Tim Tebow's favorite Bible quote is from John 3.16. In fact, he has put this sometimes written on his face under his eyes. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him might have eternal life. This is anathema to the NFL. They are not afraid that he will fail. They are afraid that he will succeed. Tim Tebow took over for Kyle Orton. The record with the Denver Broncos was 1-4. and four. Tim Tebow took over and guided them to the playoffs, and they won their first playoff victory. In that game, Tebow passed for 316 yards and each pass completion was an average of 31.6 yards. That is no accident. God was emphasizing the fact that his favorite Bible verse is John 3.16. The NFL does not want any quarterback who is favored by Almighty God. The Denver Broncos traded Tim Tebow after that season, and they hired Peyton Manning as their quarterback instead. Now, there's no doubt Peyton Manning is a Hall of Fame quarterback. But it's important to note that he did not do any better than Tim Tebow. He guided Denver last year to a playoff game, and they won their first playoff game, but lost their next game. The identical record of Tim Tebow. Does that mean Tim Tebow is a Hall of Fame quarterback? I think it's very possible, but we will never know. 
because the NFL is discriminating against an outspoken Christian. And that is the warning that God is giving to you and me. And now another very interesting article appeared on the internet just this morning. And I would like to read this one for you as a, as a little side note to the Tim Tebow story. And the title and the headline of this one is Kentucky Cross County Runner Pulls Out of a Regional Championship Rather Than Run with Bib Number 666. Maybe you can see that headline. Now this is very interesting. In one of the strangest cases of purported religious beliefs intersecting with athletic performance, and that's what we're talking about today, a Kentucky junior cross-county runner voluntarily walked away from a chance to qualify for the state meet to avoid running with the bib number 666 which she said conflicted with her Christian beliefs. Well, good for you. As reported in depth by Lexington NBC affiliate LEX18, Whitley County High cross-country runner Cody Thacker voluntarily forfeited her spot in a regional championship race after her coach drew bib number 666 for the runner. Thacker and her coach argued that she should be allowed to switch her number, but race officials refused their request. Sounds like she's trying out for the NFL, doesn't it? Those officials would later deny that Thacker claimed she needed to change bib numbers for religious reasons, though the junior insists she was explicit about her motivation. To her, Running with the number 666 on her chest would have signified a serious breach in her faith. I didn't want to risk my relationship with God and try to take that number, Thacker told LEX18. I told them to mark out my name because it makes me sick just thinking that my name is associated with that number. Well, Cody Thacker, congratulations. I agree with you 100%. Finding favor with God is not the same as finding favor with the officials of this world, as Tim Tebow is finding out and as you are finding out. But God bless you, Cody, because you are giving a wonderful example for the rest of us. All of these are warnings from Almighty God to you and me that we, as Christians, we can expect the same kind of discrimination, the same kind of persecution, very soon in these perilous end times. And one last note. Please don't forget, if you want to support my ministry, or if you would like to download the unsealing of Daniel chapter 7 and 8, please visit my new website, thirdeaglemedia.com.